could you be getting in your own way? Hmm. I leave that question there for you to ponder on. It's a um, buzz question in the coaching industry. You're getting in your own way or stop getting in your own way or just get out of your own way. And I remember the first few times I heard that phrase it made me mad. Why the heck would I be getting in my own way? That doesn't make any sense. But here's the thing. If we don't take responsibility by deciding that we are the ones getting in our own way and we blame other people, our parents, our childhood, the economy, our boss, our spouse, then we are giving away our power and we have no way of changing things. We don't. So the key here is to take the responsibility, although it feels a little bit weird, but I'll explain to you in a minute with a simple example, how we do get in our own way, at least I did yesterday, so you could see maybe if it resonates with you. But it is the first step taking that responsibility so that we can do something about it, so that we can change it, so that we can create the new way that we want things to be. And this happens to clients when I'm coaching them one-on-one -on -one all the time. Oh, public speaking is scary. I'm terrified to do it. I can't do it. I can't put myself out there. I had this horrible experience in the past. It's going to be horrible again. It's really hard to get speaking gigs. All of them, what do I say? Bullshit. Bullshit. Clients have showed me that it is possible and easy, as I have experienced myself, to get speaking engagements. And it is possible and it could be easy, even fun, to get over the fear of public speaking or any other fear for that matter. So back to the reason why I did this, hopped on this live, right? How are we getting in our own way? Here's a simple, simple example. I've been putting off running this errand for a while now. I am doing a raffle for the school that I volunteer in for my kids' school. And one of the prices I had to go pick up. It's a little bit far away, so I thought, I don't want to go. Oh, what a pain. I don't want to do this. It's so annoying. And adding and adding and adding this vibe to this errand. Well, at some point I said, that's it. I'm going to schedule it in and I'm just going to eat that frog as we are taught, right? That was yesterday. Hopped in the car, got to the place in less than 12 minutes. Walked right in, spoke to one person. They had the prize for me explained it to me in less than three minutes. Awesome price. I mean, four hours of free golfing for 12 people. I mean, something amazing. Great gift. Got back in my car and thought I'd be back home in 12 minutes. Started driving, put on the GPS, got to a place I recognized maybe five minutes away from my home and something inside me told me I was in the wrong lane. But I decided to ignore that. That instinct, that intuition, that intuitive hit. I decided to ignore it and I chose to pay attention to the GPS. So I followed it all the way back to the highway, in the wrong direction, to a horrible 35-minute traffic stop. 
bumper to bumper stuck traffic. And on top of that, I had less than 10 miles of gas left in my tank. Less than 10 miles. So here I am stuck in this bumper to bumper traffic, extremely frustrated looking at the other direction on the highway where the cars are just flowing up easily. And here I am stressing out in the traffic, looking at my gas tank and seeing, oh my God, I have 10 miles left. I have nine miles left. I have eight miles left. What the heck did I do? So I'll tell you what I did. Hi, I can't see who it is. Type in the comments. How are you? I couldn't believe I did that. So what did I do? Two things. Number one, I got in my own way. How did I get in my own way? It was clear. Number one, I had an intuitive hit that I was on the wrong lane. And all I had to do is follow my intuition. But I didn't. Number two, I had worked up these beliefs around this errand for already several days that this was going to be hard, that this was going to be annoying, that this was going to be difficult. And you know what? That's what my mind decided to give me because I originally created it. So it said, okay, it's not going to be easy for you. It couldn't be 12 minutes there, pick up the prize, get back in the car 12 minutes back, all the errand done in under 30 minutes. No, I had called, I want it to be hard. I had worked up all these beliefs around it. It's going to be difficult. I don't want to do it. It's annoying. It's going to be a lot of work. It might not have it ready for me. All these thoughts and beliefs and ideas that I decided to impregnate this errand with ended up turning into a freaking nightmare that thankfully <laughs> did not leave me stranded without gas in the middle of the highway. But almost, I probably got to the gas station and I probably had like five miles left. And I've said over and over and over again, I'm not going to do that. But I guess we all, we like to learn sometimes the hard way, don't we? And it's the contrast we invite into our lives so that we can expand and grow and make better decisions next time. So we're human and that's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. And like I share with you guys, I'll tap it away into acceptance, into a place of acceptance. I am okay with what I've done, with who I am, with what I decided to do, and I love and accept myself regardless. Tapping is amazing. In case you haven't seen any of my videos on tapping, just browse through here or on the website or Google and YouTube, EFT, tapping to release any emotional resistance or blocks that we have to whatever it is that we want. Because here's the thing, the bottom line, why do we throw resistance in our path? Easy. Sometimes we make it harder on ourselves than it needs to be. We feel, oh, if it's too easy, it can't be that easy. Do I deserve it to be that easy? Am I deserving of that then? Hmm. Does making it harder make it more deserving? Make me more deserving? So we all throw these little blocks through our thoughts and our emotions in our path that add resistance to whatever we want. So when clients say public speaking is hard, I'm terrified of it. Or they say speaking gigs are difficult to get. Or I can't do this. I can't put myself out there. I can't press the live button. I've been through it. Of course, I know what it feels like. I know we put out that thought in order to make us ourselves supposedly feel a little bit better, right? 
to cope with that fear, to say, to stay safe, to keep ourselves protected so we don't have to do something that is unknown what's going to happen. But is it true? And I have to call it out. It's not. It's definitely not. It's absolutely not. And that's what I'm inviting you to. I'm working on a webinar that you'll hear very soon more information about, where I am going to demystify five myths that are keeping you from creating the impact and income that you deserve. Cutting the BS, cutting the crap out of the way, because I've proved it, I've seen it, I've seen clients do it over and over again, easily getting speaking gigs, easily and in a fun way pressing that go live button, easily overcoming that fear of public speaking and discovering even more that they had a natural talent for it, but they didn't give themselves the opportunity before, and now they are. And that's the power of demystifying those myths. That's what I'm gonna share with you very, very soon. So stay tuned and call yourself out on it. Ask yourself, how am I creating my own resistance? Am I getting in my own way? Call yourself out on it. Lovingly and acceptingly, because we're human, of course. Namaste.